to the sea. From the river to the sea. How many children have to die? Before you call it genocide. How many children have to die? Before you call it genocide. What's the powers you can't hide? Please, six months in, are we still coming up strong? I'm proud of you. This is what makes this less painful because we do lose hope. But when I see people like you, we've been going out for six months. We created this community that shares the same values, which is a blessing in such a crucial time. And viva, viva! Palestina! Viva, viva! Palestina! And viva, viva! Palestina! Viva, viva! Palestina! And viva, viva! Palestina! Viva, viva! Palestina! I need to hear you clap. You have no excuse now, we're standing. Viva, viva! Palestina! Viva, viva! Palestina! Viva, viva! Palestina! Viva, viva! Palestina! And Mudu Tahya! Palestine! And Mudu Tahya! Palestine! Oh, Asha Tasha! 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 Palestine! And Viva, viva! Palestine! And Viva, viva! Palestine. Viva, viva! Palestine. Viva, viva! Palestine. And from the river to the sea,
for Palestine. Thank you to the 120 organizations that have signed up to pledge their solidarity to the Palestinian cause. Thank you all for showing once again to the governments of Ireland, Europe and the world that Ireland stands in solidarity with Palestine. We are here and we will not disappear. For six months and make no mistake today is just the tip of the iceberg every day every week there are vigils and demonstrations taking place across Ireland Irish people are organizing and mobilizing in solidarity to show clearly that we reject the atrocities that Israel continues to perpetuate against the Palestinian people. That we say no to genocide, no to ethnic cleansing, and no to Israeli apartheid. Yes, enough. Our government must stop giving money to Israeli weapons manufacturers. We are obligated under the Genocide Convention to stop US military flights that are carrying weapons that are utilized to commit unspeakable acts of horror on Palestinians a mouse and you say you are neutral, the mouse will not appreciate your solidarity. Well today we once again show Israel and our political leaders we are not mice. We are money, we are rising and you will hear us roar and we will not stop. to all of us who have marched for the last six months and before that. The IPSC chairperson and a Limerick native, Zoe's been campaigning for Palestine rights as part of the IPSC for over two decades. She's also a co-founder of Gaza Action Ireland and in 2011 she spent a week in an Israeli prison after being kidnapped in international waters on the Irish ship to Gaza. Zoe Lawler. Hello everyone. Well you have definitely not gone away. huge numbers. They want us to go away, to lose energy, but we will never stop coming out. We will never stop coming out for Palestine. We are growing in our energy and our commitment to ending this injustice and our solidarity with the Palestinian people is unbreakable. And in the midst of so much horror, it is important to mark all the terrible losses and the massacres, and that is difficult because there are so many, but we have to be part of memorializing, of refusing to let it get lost in the overwhelming violence. That is our duty, to mark the massacres, to not let the names go unspoken, to not let the outrage go unspoken, to not let this pass. It is our duty to remember the 34,000 people murdered in 
been murdered, the thousands of people buried under the rubble, the wounded, the maimed, the bereaved and the imprisoned, the children who lost their mums and dads and the mums and dads who lost their children. We have to remember them all. And we have to keep marking these atrocities because incredibly, the mass murder of hundreds of people at Shifa Hospital is just not talked about in the media or in mainstream discourse. <laughs> Israeli occupation forces executed patients in their beds. Doctors who refused to leave their patients were shot on the spot. Hundreds of government employees were murdered in mass executions and their bodies bulldozed. A mass grave was found with people in casts and catheters. They had all been executed. Imagine they are executing patients in a hospital. They are executing medical workers. How can Israel be allowed to go from denying in October that they would ever bomb a hospital to actually boasting about destroying Al Shifa Hospital and murdering hundreds of people there? And how can these unspeakable crimes go unremarked? And that is why we have to keep marching and keep speaking out and rejecting this genocide. We have heard reports from doctors and testimony from families of children being shot in the head by Israeli snipers. Let me say those words again. Children are being shot in the head by Israeli snipers. On Monday, a five-year-old girl, Sally Abu Leila, was shot in the head by Israeli occupation forces while she was in her mother's arms. On Tuesday, a playground for displaced children, a playground, was bombed, murdering 11 children. Did you hear this on our airwaves? Because I did not. Did you hear this condemned in the Dáil? Because I didn't. Children are also being shot every day in the West Bank by soldiers and settlers and there can be no doubt killing Palestinian children is Israeli state policy. And their families and loved ones are not even afforded the dignity of saying goodbye to their murdered children in privacy but have to do so in bloody corridors surrounded being filmed. In the space of 24 hours on Thursday, more than 70 people were murdered in Gaza, but this is simply not reported on anymore. People are being shot trying to get food for their families, shot distributing food, and they are being systematically starved. This is a long-lasting crime. The physical, social, and emotional trauma of forced starvation will take decades to recover from, and we know this only too well. Violence is manifested in hunger. And as a people who were also starved by an occupier, we have a generational and moral responsibility to stop this. The utter devastation left in Gaza is the clear action and intention to obliterate the present and future of the Palestinian people. All their homes gone, their universities gone, their schools gone, their neighborhoods gone, and we cannot countenance an invasion of Rafa, which would be another further genocide and bloodbath. It must be stopped. Yeah. Keep your eyes on the West Bank too, where ethnic cleansing, murder, mass incarceration and illegal colony building are all escalating. There is now an active genocide alert because of the ongoing violence in the West Bank and this must stop. And still we see Palestinians swimming in the sea when they can and turning their tents into art and making playgrounds for displaced children and tending to each other and minding each other. And I talk about these Palestinian heroes of Gaza every time because it is important. And as they 
they continue to uphold their humanity and dignity, so must we. It is the heart, it is the core of everything. Because while what Israel gives us is violence, brutality, hate, destruction and racism, what Palestinians continue to give us and show us is their spirit, their closeness, their community, their love and their unbelievable resilience. They teach us life. And what enables Israel's genocide? What allows these daily crimes against humanity? Impunity, decades of impunity. The US and the EU funding, arming, enabling and allowing Israel's crimes against the Palestinian people for decades. Like the racism that was exposed when there was an outcry at the murder of seven aid workers from the World Central Kitchen. And it is right that there was an outcry at this. But why were the people not outraged at the murder of the first seven Palestinians? Or at the murder of more than 34,000 Palestinians? Where has their outrage about 76 years of Israel's apartheid, ethnic cleansing and settler colonialism been? And again, for these six months and for all our years of campaigning, we are still having to demand meaningful action from the Irish government to sanction Israel. What will it take? How can our government be so disconnected from us? Our demands are still the same because they refuse to do the right thing. They must enact the Occupied Territories Bill, the Illegal Israeli Settlements Divestment Bill, stop trade with the apartheid state, call for an arms embargo and end to the EU-Israel trade agreement, expel the Israeli ambassador, and get the US military out of Shannon. We are pushing them. Their words, the ICJ intervention, the NTMA divestment from complicit companies, them talking about moves around Palestine. Every action is down to this movement, to our work, to the huge street demonstrations, the lobbying, all the activities, the actions at Shannon, at colleges, all of it. So keep pushing, it is working. <laughs> slow but we are moving them and as much as we show solidarity and rejection of these crimes our media with a few exceptions is silent all our third level institutions except one are silent apart from amazing solidarity groups in healthcare in education in arts in sports at an organizational and sectoral level there is silence and this is deeply shameful if they will not speak out now then when and if they will not speak out now then they stand for nothing and this is why we cannot and we will not be silent in a time of genocide. Our humanity demands action. And this week, with the verdict of unlawful killing in the inquiry into the Stardust Fire, where 48 people's lives were stolen, we saw that in this world and in Ireland, the road to justice is long. It is hard fought, but when you don't give up, you win. We pay tribute to the family, families and allies of all those who died in the stardust. And I think some of them are here today. They never gave up. Despite this state putting every obstacle in their way, they kept fighting for 43 long years and they finally got justice. Salute to them. And we know too that there will be justice for Palestine, but we cannot give up this fight. So, keep boycotting.
Boycotting! Boycott all is really good! Alexa, Loopy Loo, Pepper, HP, Intel! Join the sporting, academic, cultural boycotts of apartheid Israel! Boycott the Eurovision! Yeah. Have a genocide party instead! Demand that Israel is kicked out of the Olympics! And remember! Remember that BDS is unstoppable! Whether we are from Palestine or have family or friends there or here or none of those, we have a collective bond with our Palestinian sisters and brothers and with each other. And this is how we survive and resist genocide. And this is how we will reclaim our world from hate and how we support the long journey to Palestinian liberation. And freedom for Palestine is freedom for all of us. We keep fighting for the prisoners, for the refugees, for the dead, for the wounded, for all our Palestinian sisters and brothers, for the land, from the river to the sea. children or adults or anybody all of us in between that wish to make postcards okay our next speaker I'm, I'm honored to share the stage with as with all that are here today Tala Nasir Tala is a Palestinian human rights lawyer who works for our dear friends in Adamir they're a Palestinian NGO that for more than 30 years have been documenting apartheid Israel's torture and abuse of Palestinian political prisoners. They campaign ceaselessly for an end to Israel's colonial penal policies of mass incarceration of both adults and children. Israel views the work of Adamir as such a threat that in 2021 it was banned as a terrorist entity. And today we are honoured to have a small part of that entity speaking today. Tala Nasir, everybody. Hello, everyone. I will start with a big thank you from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of the Palestinian people to each and every one of you for all your solidarity with Palestine. We are fully aware of all the demonstrations you organize and all the pressure you put to, to stop all the crimes and, and this genocide still taking place. We follow all, all your activities and this gives us hope that with the support of people around the world, we will achieve victory and we will be liberated from this brutal colonization and apartheid regime. I came from Palestine a week ago, leaving behind my family suffering due to the recent arrest of my little cousin and sister, Layam, leaving behind my people subjected to worst kinds of crimes. The situation in Palestine is horrible right now. Within the last six months, more than 34,000 Palestinians were killed in the Gaza Strip in this genocide still taking place. More than 470 Palestinians were killed in the West Bank and occupied Jerusalem. This Israeli apartheid regime is not sparing anyone. They are targeting Palestinians from the river to the sea with killings, assaults, humiliation, and massive arrest campaigns. 
amid the ongoing attempts to silence Palestinians and prevent them from raising their voices against all the crimes taking place, the Israeli authorities are conducting massive arrest campaigns in colonized Palestine. They have arrested within six months more than 8,300 Palestinians and 80% of them are being held and were transferred to administrative detention, which is an arbitrary detention similar to the internment. Palestinians from the Gaza Strip are subjected to enforced disappearance. Detainees are subjected to severe torture. A number of detainees have been killed in Israeli military camps, under torture of course, and lawyers have no information about the circumstances behind their deaths. Because we as lawyers are banned from visiting any of these military camps and the International Committee of the Red Cross is also banned from visiting these military camps and the Israeli prisons. On the other hand, the Israeli army and Israeli officials, high-ranking officials, are bragging about committing forms of torture against Palestinians, which have reached a limit such that the so-called Israeli Minister of National Security, criminal Itamar bin Gvir, stated yesterday that in order to reduce the overcrowding in prisons, they want to execute prisoners. Uh, to impose further violations and crimes against Palestinians are due to the impunity the Israelis enjoy till this moment. This is why we strongly demand holding this apartheid regime accountable along with any country complicit in the ongoing genocide. Thank you everyone. Stop the genocide now. End Israeli apartheid. Sanctions now. Free all political prisoners. Free the justice for Palestine. Thank you. Um, just a couple of uh, small things before we introduce the next. Um, tomorrow there's a community football marathon match Sorry, from 12 to 6 at Hindraja Park, which used to be Herzog Park. So we'd encourage you all to get along. Remember, solidarity is a verb. It's a verb. You need to tell boycott Palestine. It's a verb to boycott Palestine. Next up, we have the inestimable Miss Claire Daly. No pressure there. Claire is an independent member of the European Parliament who's been a lifelong and outspoken defender of Palestinian rights and supporter of the Palestinian freedom struggle. She needs a very small introduction. Welcome, Claire Daly. What a magnificent display of people power. From every corner of our island, we are here, united in one voice, demanding an end to genocide and justice for Palestine. And while there's nowhere else that we would rather be, it is an outrage, the circumstances that bring us here, that for seven months now, we have borne witness to the massacre of innocence day after day, week after week, month after month of unimaginable barbarism in full public view. While our so-called leaders, the enlightened ones, those with values, have not only done nothing, but have enabled it every single step of the way. that Ursula, fond of lying, Frau Genocide herself, draped the European Union buildings in the Israeli flag, 
The European Union has pursued full square with genocide. Well, shame on them. Arm in arm with Butcher Biden, it couldn't have happened without them. So when Netanyahu promised a mighty it was US and European countries that cut the funding to starving Palestinians. And when Israel bombed the Iranian embassy in Damascus, killing 15 people, and Iran responded, killing nobody, it was the US and EU who immediately condemned and sanctioned Iran, something they haven't done in seven months with Israel. <laughs> European complicity will never be forgotten. And we are here on these streets to say to Michal Martin and Simon Harris, that includes ye as well. Because when Francesca Albanese, the UN Special Rapporteur, spoke, she said Ireland is very strong on rhetoric, but ye have delivered not just little, but zero. So we are here to say enough. Nine danke. We don't want words. We want action. That action, that action has to start with an arms embargo. The closure of our civilian airport in Shannon to the US military as they supply weapons to kill Palestinians. No more US military out of Shannon. It means divestment. I'm not just divesting a few treasury bonds while you spend 10 times that amount selling dual use goods to Israel. We want full divestment from it all. And we want not a review of the EU-Israel agreement, which gives Israel preferential treatment. We want it suspended now. So this is why we're here. The only way this can end is by the total global isolation of Zionist Israel. And just like apartheid South Africa, it will not be the politicians who will deliver this. It will be won by a global movement on the streets. Led by people like you. Each and every one of you who are here, you must leave here confident that you are part of a global movement of justice, a global movement where people are off our knees and on our feet demanding justice for Palestine. So in conclusion, The slogan over there says it all, and the people of Palestine know it very well. To live is to resist, and as we live, we will resist with every inch of our being. No justice, no peace, free Gaza, free Palestine. Wow. Um, just, there's a couple of QR codes going around. As we said, solidarity is a verb. Um, so I know times are tough, but it's how we put things together. Today costs a huge amount of finance, 
but also the emotional labour. Um, but we need to keep funding the work that we're doing. Um, so you can see people out in the crowds with QR code, scan. Um, and if today isn't a good day for you, maybe during the week, if, if things work out, you can throw a few bob our way then. Thank you very much. Also, uh, we have a historical friendly that I'm sure most of you are aware of, the Bohemian Football Club and Palestinian Women's National Team. It's all about the women. Um, it's, gonna, it's commemorating Nakba, so it's called A Match With Meaning. Um, kickoffs at 7.45, it's on in Daily Mount Park. Go, go in your thousands and your millions because we are all in our thousands, in our millions. In our thousands, in our millions. From the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. today to announce our next speaker. I doubt there's an activist in Ireland that has not listened to this man. I doubt there is an activist in Ireland that hasn't found meaning in his words. A true gentleman of Ireland. A man that has campaigned for years and continues to campaign. A man who needs no introduction. A singer, a songwriter, a lifelong rebel against injustice who has never let the bastards grind them down. Christy Moore! Friends, how are you all? It's really good to be here. Last night, I got out of the van and forgot to take the guitar out. So the van is going to Donegal with my guitar. So you have to listen to me singing unaccompanied. Yeah. A couple of months back, we did a concert in Vicar Street for Medicine San Frontier. And it was a very successful night. And a friend of mine in Seattle, in Washington State, Jim Page, some of you will remember him, he wrote a song like Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Russian Roulette and he came to Ireland to Karen Point uh, in 1978 and stayed with us for 10 years and when he heard the concert was happening in Vicar Street he sent me over this song and asked me to sing it. So I'm going to sing it for you again now, this is Jim Page's song simply called Palestine. Let me tell you a story I'll be as quick as I can There's terrible news From the Holy Land Pictures of children Etched in my mind Buried in the rubble Along the fire and line The Jews and the Arabs Lived one and the same for a thousand years Palestine. There's talk about settlers from far away. There's talk about dollars from the USA. There's talk about blast bombs, about the bullets and the lead, with the shadow of the jackpot hanging over their hand. What can you do when they demolish your home? Your olive trees all buried and gone. Do you dare to resist? Stand on the road with a rock in your fist. In Palestine, in Palestine. They talk about peace, 
like it's a moral obligation but you'll never have peace living under occupation they talk about talks 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 to the beat of the drum 70 years now and nothing's been done we need to talk about the friends we still endorse about the rockets and the tanks and the warships they disperse no seems to be an undemocratic version of democracy in Palestine, in Palestine. Let me tell you a story, I'll be as quick as I can. There's terrible news from the Holy Land. Thank you. Thank you. on the shoulders of giants of those who went before us who fought for a better society and we continue to do so uh, i think martin o'quigley um the amazing martin o'quigley would like to have a few words but martin thank you very much i just want to thank people for their support for the ireland palestine solidarity campaign we've been campaigning since 2001 and uh, so I thank you for support, especially recently with the genocide happening in Gaza. So there are QR codes uh, held by stewards. I see one over here, over there as well. So if, if you want to make a donation, that's great, because uh, it will help us. This is going to be a long campaign. We've been campaigning since 2001. So this is going to be a long campaign, and we need all your support. And I can just ask you if you would like to get out a standing order, it would really help us. For as little as five euros a month, it would really help help uh, our campaign and uh, to get organized, because we have, we support branches all over the country, north, south, east and west. So thank you very much for your support so far. And uh, Palestine will be free. 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 Thank you. On another note, um, Christy's just speaking backstage. We're very honoured and privileged to have the campaigners and survivors of Stardust here today. <laughs> I would ask you all to raise your hands in solidarity for the victory, for the victory of the Stardust campaign that for years our government tried to push and they came like we're doing and they knocked on doors and they fought. Solidarity! Solidarity to all those who fight for a better world. Solidarity to all who deserve justice. We are many, they are few. I'm humbled, humbled. Okay, we'll um, our, thank you very much, Brian. Yes, yes, thanks very much. Yes, yes, all right. Not your show, lads. Skip along, skip along. We don't need your publicity because we are here. They can hear us. 
but take it from a good angle. <laughs> Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we have another performance. It's a beautiful day, so I want to see everybody moving and grooving and boogieing. Lena Latif, her cork based musical duo, but we won't hold that against them. Lena is a Palestinian activist, singer, artist, and poet whose themes resolve around social justice, identity, and belonging, and for whom singing and storytelling are an inherent part of her Palestinianness. Latif is a Moroccan guitarist and a member of the Cork Palestine Solidarity Campaign and a BDS activist. Ladies and gentlemen, big hand together for Lean and Latif. Hi everyone. Six months ago, Children held a press conference uh, begging the world um, to end demolitions, um, but no one listened. No one listened, and and today we we have um, more than fifteen thousand children um, killed by Israel. And recently, Israeli drones killed eleven children who were playing in a playground. And other children are trying to find resistance through joy, swinging over power lines, treating them as, as swings just for fun. Um, um, so this song that we're going to sing is dedicated to the children. Um, the, the first time the song was sung was in 1984. So, and it was sung by the children from the perspective of a child um, um, in three languages. And we're here today to sing it 40 years later, to sing the same song. It's like it. It's 5K. 5K? Yeah. 5K in the life now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 5,000. Yeah, 5,000. Oh, give us a 
โอเกวิสโอเกวัสเซชันซาตูนเอตุฟูนีอตูนเอตุฟูนีอตูนเอตุฟูนีอตูนาอตูนาอตูนาสัน Yeah, I just sometimes people's performances just leave you speechless, and it's their quietness when they're loud. Um, get you all riled up again. So, don't forget football marathon tomorrow. Don't forget the QR codes. Martin Quigley will shoot me if I don't keep pushing the QR codes. Uh, everybody, can you see them? They're all up and about. Boycott Palestine. AXA Day of Action next Wednesday. Go to AXA, email them, annoy them on the telephone. Um, they tend to do training on the days that we do actions. So if you can pass them by on a non-training day, call in. Uh, it is working. We are working. Things are changing. And now is the time that we must put more pressure on because we know they're shifting. Free, free! Free, free! Free, free! In our thousands, in our millions! We are all Palestinians! In our millions, in our billions! We are all Palestinians! In our thousands, in our millions! We are all Palestinians! From the river to the sea! Palestine will be free! From the river to the sea! Palestine will be free! Next up, we have Tamar Najim! Tamar is a master student from Gaza who's now living in Limerick. She is living testimony to everything that is happening in Gaza. She is a survivor of six horrific Israeli assaults in her short life. She aims, and I have no doubt this amazing young woman will achieve it, to be an ambassador for Palestine in order to help her people win their freedom. Palestinians are all our brothers and sisters. We welcome loudly, with solidarity, Tamar. Uh, hi y'all, uh, so some of you might know me, some of you might not, but I would say one thing, I'm a living testimony from Gaza Strip, I'm 25 years old, a survivor of six, war six wars, so I'll be saying the following, I thought a lot before coming here, what should I talk about, how should I describe it this time, it's been six to seven months now. Usually, we start by introducing who I am, but does it really matter? Does it really matter my age, my name, where I come from, who I am? I don't think so anymore. We have been sharing a lot of stories in the past few months, talking about many people. They began by saying, her name is, she is, years old, she studied, blah, blah, blah. But what's the point of it? What if everything I've done can't save me from death? What if it can't help me bring people to life? What if it can't even save my family? What if all my certificates and education can't save me from anything? To be honest, I've lost my ability to describe anything anymore. No matter how much I try, it doesn't work with me. It's indescribable. I can't even find a child inside me. It was killed. You don't have to be killed in a war to leave this world. Living through a war and feeling it away from your family, watching them slowly die in front of your eyes, bit by bit feeling helpless, it can also kill you alive. We are living betrayers, not just now, but from the very moment we were born. Just because we are from Palestine, we have been sentenced to death in every way since the beginning, in a ways that your mind cannot imagine. Today marks around 200 centuries, 196 centuries, yes, you hear that right, 
centuries because every day feels like a century in Gaza Strip for all of us. It's just around 200 centuries, 200 days. More than 45,000 bombs were robbed in the city. 2,941 2, massacres were committed. 33,270 humans and 13,500 children were murdered. 7,800 people are still buried under the rebels and more of it. 75,933 people were injured. 9,056 560 women, 484 medical staff, 65 civil rescue workers, and 140 journalists were murdered. 100 schools or more were completely destroyed. 32 hospitals were completely bombed, and 8,080 people have been arrested since the beginning of this genocide. This is equivalent to the all atrocities in the whole world. This war has made me lose faith in all international laws and human rights. This war is a test for our humanity, and most of us. I'm so sorry to tell you, we have failed. But if I have to be honest and precise, it has been more than 75 years of occupation, colonization, and persecutions. It's not a conflict. Again, it's not a conflict. For each action, there's always a reaction. Palestine also has the right to self-defense, not any other countries too. According to the Universal Declaration, According to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 1 and 2, states clearly that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. And everyone, everyone, without any exemptions, is entitled to all rights and freedoms. But look at us, there is always exemptions if you are weak. Oh, sorry, oops. I just forgot it was a lie and they only apply to the strong people. If I were to describe myself now in the last days and how would I feel, it would resemble most of our feelings as Palestinians during my conversation with my people. So I would go and read one of the poems that I wrote. Voices is all I can hear. Everything is beyond what I can bear. My heart is full of fear, fear of dying and turning into pieces. I want you to know that the world lost its peace. My legs, my eyes, my soul becomes heavy. Every time I see animals eating my dead body, I am dead, but I witness everything he did. I'm dying for a piece of a bread. I'm dying for a piece of a bread. And if I found it, I can't find my head. All I can see is the streets full of red. I want you to know that my heart got fed. You can't take my right of resistance from my forehead. It was written on me since the day you shot all of my family dead. You can ask me to stop. You can't ask me to forgive. You can't ask me to leave my right to live. I shall not forget. I shall not forgive. May my people's souls rest in peace, though I am sure their souls are free to grieve. I shall not forget. I shall not forgive. I shall not forgive anything you did. Finally, I forgot to tell you that you need to add my family to the numbers I mentioned earlier as the next potential victims. As since the beginning of the war, my family had to evacuate four times. My house was bombed. My family had to evacuate to another place. They were asked after 24 hours to evacuate. Then in two hours, the, the entire neighborhood was killed. My family had to run under bombs, under rockets, under phosphor and tons of things. My little brothers had to witness dead people on the ground. Skeletons, everything till the way of Rafah. They spent two weeks, sorry, two months in Rafah, in a tent, living in a very hard condition without any access to anything you can imagine. Then they have to go back to an Nasirat camp. And now, with unknown destination, unknown future, I had to witness my family two times in a video call being bombed without being able to do anything or doing anything to them and I might be losing them soon, as I am talking to all of you now, as all of the things in the world are unable to stop the genocide, even the human rights that were created for specific people in the first place. It's kind of funny, I've raised a fund for my family because I've lost hope with many things, but I'm not an influencer, so people are not taking a look at me. I'm not famous enough for people to take notice and help. 
But please, at least keep your eyes in Palestine and make your actions louder and forgettable. Because during a speech and during a conversation with beeping in graveyard, they told me to tell you, make sure that you build a graveyard for each betrayer inside your heart and make people never forget about them. Graveyards are not only in Palestine, it's in each, all, in each one of us hearts, build a graveyard and never let history forget about them. Stop the genocide in Gaza Strip, in the Israeli apartheid, sensation now, freedom and justice for Palestine. Don't leave us as numbers, let the world know our stories because we are human. Buy a kid any relationship with people that are manufacturing women for websites. The upcoming potential foreman, oh, sorry, the upcoming potential orphan and betrayer was speaking to you. And if I died, my, you are the witness of my story and next teller. And if my flag fell down, I'm sure you would pick it up. Another time, the upcoming potential orphan and betrayer was speaking to you. Thank you all for listening. You have my vote, Ambassador. Thank you all so much, and thanks for staying the course. We finish with our speakers. Once again, we can't thank you enough for your solidarity. Um, Rafif Ziad is speaking. There's a speaking tour. Um, she'll be in Galway uh, with Let It Be A Tale. Uh, Galway, Cork, Limerick, please check our social medias. Um, check social media for our next national demo that we hope we can see you all. As the IPSC South East West, it doesn't go unnoticed, we've marched from Waterford to Wicklow, from Cork to Cavan, from Limerick, Tyrone, Belfast. Ireland is changing and Ireland is making a difference. And you are the ones who are doing it. This is where the solidarity happens. This is a local election year. When they come to your doors, and they will, no support, no vote. No support, no vote. You, we the people, make this the issue. Thank you so much for attending. Be safe going home and say, free, 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 from the river to the sea, from the river to the sea, from the river to the sea, from the river to the sea. In our thousands, in our millions. We are all Palestinians. In our thousands, in our millions. We are all Palestinians. In our millions, in our billions. We are all Palestinians. In our millions, in our billions. We are all Palestinians. Free, free Palestine. Free. Nice to meet you. Thanks, Miriam. I was, I was in Egypt in January because we had to uh, get money to the girls. Yeah, so we went to Egypt to Cairo to meet a guy. Yeah, and then now we can transfer money. Oh, so we've uh, 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 yeah, uh, you two teachers. Cairo. You're in Cairo, yeah. yeah. There are two teachers with us. Yes. Our bus is meeting on Nassau Street at five. But just to let you know, yeah. where, where, where? Okay, give me a minute. Just tell you guys. Yeah. If, like, if you have a link, just share with me. I can send it to them. Uh, yes. Yeah, it would be much better, I think. So. These girls would on Al Jazeera. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I, I actually I scanned that code. Yes. Yeah, no, press it. Are you on Instagram? Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> 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 
G A Z eight three seven four. This is when there was on Al Jazeera, and then the BBC. Okay. Yeah, it's coming in a minute. Yeah. Okay. And then the BBC. They came to Belfast. They won a competition. They did drama, okay. and they stayed with us in our house in the mountains. Okay. Yeah. And then there was on the BBC. Yeah. Uh, BBC, where's the BBC one? There's the BBC one. So it just says about. This is when they, they went after the occupation in October. Yes. Okay. It's amazing. Yes. So I didn't want to take a photograph. You got food? Yeah. That's my. I like the home with it. That is gas. <laughs> Yeah. Nice meeting you. 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 Nice meeting I think I get it this before. Yeah? Yeah, I have. Yeah, because we've been here like before. Yeah, yeah I get it three times actually. Okay. Thanks, Thank Rina. Also, ich stelle es gerade von dem Bild. Das heißt, ja, wenn der.